This is chapter seven, chemical reactions and quantities. Section six is calculations using molar mass. In the last video, we saw that the molar mass of a substance, it just tells you how much one mole of that substance weighs in grams. We're gonna see in this video how the molar mass can be thought of as a conversion factor between the mass of a substance and the mole quantity of the substance. And this is gonna be useful because chemical equations tell us mole ratios, mole relationships between substances in a reaction. But we can't really directly measure mole ratios without counting out an absurdly large number of particles. So instead, we wanna be able to weigh out our substances and then use that mass that we measured to calculate how many particles or moles it actually represents. And so the molar mass is gonna let us do that. So the molar mass can be thought of as a conversion factor, and like any conversion factor, therefore it's a fraction or a ratio that tells you the relationship between the two units involved in the conversion. In this case, it tells you the relationship between the grams, the mass, and the moles of an element or a compound. So for example, if you have methane, the formula is CH4, it's one carbon atom and four hydrogen atoms. The carbon weighs 12.01 and the hydrogen weighs 1.01 each. So if you add all those together, you get 16.05 grams of methane. So one mole of methane weighs 16.05 grams. So we can think of this fundamental relationship, which is just an equality or an equation, uh, in terms of a conversion factor, right? On the left, you have 16.05 grams of methane per mole. And on the right, you have one mole of methane per 16.05 grams, okay? So you can use either one of these depending on the context of the problem as, as usual with conversion factors. For example, we can take a problem like this. A box of table salt, NaCl or sodium chloride, contains 737 grams of sodium chloride. How many moles of sodium chloride are in the box? This is really a very simple conversion problem. It's a one-step conversion from the mass of the compound that they gave us to the moles of the compound, which is what the problem is asking for. So step one is state the given and needed quantities, right? We're given the mass, 737 grams of sodium chloride, and we need the moles of sodium chloride. And so we have to remember that the thing that converts mass to moles or moles to mass is the molar mass, okay? So we need, now we know that we need to find the molar mass of this substance that we're talking about, okay? Uh, step two is write the plan to convert grams to moles. So we start with grams, we multiply it by some conversion factor, which is related to the molar mass, and that is gonna give us moles of sodium chloride. So step three is then to obtain the molar mass, which is the conversion factor that we need. Sodium chloride contains just one sodium atom and one chlorine atom, okay? So the mass of sodium straight from the periodic table is 22.99. The mass of chlorine from the periodic table is 35.45. Since we just have one of each, we can say that we're multiplying each by one, but that really doesn't matter because we get the same number. Uh, and then we just add them together and it turns out that the mass, the molar mass of sodium chloride is 58.44 grams per mole. And so the two conversion factors that we can use are 58.44 grams per mole or one mole per 58.44 grams. Uh, now often when I use molar masses, I not only include the gram and mole unit, but I'll also uh, make a note of what the substance actually is that I'm counting. Okay? Because a lot of times if we wanna cancel the unit, we have to recognize that a mole of sodium chloride can't cancel a mole of some other substance, for instance. Okay? So we have to keep track of what it is that we're counting in a lot of cases. And then the next step is to just set up the problem. Okay? So you start from the given quantity. So in this case, it's the mass of sodium chloride, 737 grams of sodium chloride. And we're taking this quantity, this measurement, and we're multiplying it by a conversion factor that's gonna leave us with the desired unit, right? Moles of sodium chloride. So if we're starting with grams and we wanna end with moles, the conversion factor will have to have grams of sodium chloride in the bottom so that it cancels out the grams of sodium chloride that we started with. And it'll have to have moles of sodium chloride on top because that's the unit that we're looking for. 
So if we look at the two conversion factors from the molar mass, we can see that on the top, if you have moles on the top, then one mole is on the top, and then the mass is on the bottom, right? With the grams, you have 58.44 grams per one mole of sodium chloride. So you're taking 737 grams and you're really dividing it by the molar mass of 58.44. And so you end up with 12.6 moles of sodium chloride. Another example, a sample of water has a mass of 59.8 grams. How many moles of water are in the sample? Again, we're given the mass of the substance. This time it is water instead of sodium chloride and we want to find the number of moles of water. And so again, we need to recognize that the molar mass is the, the link between those two. So you have to remember that molar mass acts as a conversion factor between grams and moles. Then we just take the molar mass of the compound, right? You should know that the formula for water is H2O. That's something you should know by now. Uh, hydrogen has a molar mass of 1.01. Every molecule of water has two hydrogens. So 2 times 1.01 gives us 2.02, .02, plus the oxygen mass. There's only one oxygen and has a mass of 16. Uh, so 16 plus the 2.02 .02 gives us a total molar mass of 18.02 grams per mole. And so again, you get your two conversion factors. Then you take the mass. Right? Starting from the mass, you multiply it by a conversion factor that has the mass on the bottom and moles on the top and that's gonna leave us the mole ratio at the end, right? Once grams of H2O cancels grams of H2O down here, then we're gonna be left with moles of H2O. And so 59.8 divided by 18.02 gives us 3.32 moles of water. Here you can see uh, the beginnings of a sort of a map or a chart that we have that shows you different transformations that you can make when you're talking about uh, measured measurements for a substance. So for instance, if you have grams of an element, you can use the molar mass of that element to figure out how many moles you have. And then you can use Avogadro's number to figure out how many individual atoms or ions that represents. If that element is part of a compound, then at any given point, you can relate the moles or the atoms of that element to the moles or the molecules of the compound using the formula subscripts. So if you're talking about moles of the element itself, you can use the formula subscript to go to the moles of the compound. If you're talking about individual atoms, you can use the formula subscript to go to individual molecules or formula units in the case of an ionic compound. And so then you can also use Avogadro's number to go back and forth between moles of a compound and molecules of a compound. Uh, and then for the compound as a whole, if you know the number of moles, you can use the total molar mass for the entire compound to figure out the mass of the compound. Okay? So this is a, a useful chart. Um, in practice, you actually don't really use this part of the chart all that much. Okay? It's not really that useful in a chemical laboratory to figure out exactly, precisely how many individual particles or atoms you have. Um, so you'll get questions like this to test your knowledge and your understanding, but it's not something that you come across in a, in a lab or in a practical setting all that often. On the other hand, the first part, which is converting between mass, grams, and moles, right? whether you're talking about for an element or for a compound, uh, this is an extremely common thing that you do in chemistry uh, virtually all the time. Anytime you're running a chemical reaction, um, for the most part, you need to relate the masses of these substances you're weighing out to the actual number of moles that are going into the reaction. And so understanding how molar mass serves as a conversion factor between mass and moles is an extremely important skill in this class. So definitely focus on this left-hand part of the chart.